this video we're going to be looking at radians. Now here we have loads of angles and they're all in degrees. Now the thing about degrees is one turn is 360 degrees. Now that could have been anything. Somebody just simply set it at 360. We could have had it as a thousand, we could have had it as 10,000, but somebody chose 360. Now we're not sure why they chose 360, but it is definitely random and it doesn't have too much of a meaning to it. However, we're going to start looking at radians now. Radians is another way of measuring angles, but it's got a little bit more meaning to it, as opposed to degrees, which was simply chosen by someone to be 360 all the way around. So let's go ahead and have a look at radians. So here we've got a sector, and the angle is one radian. And what's special about that is, since it's open to one radian, the arc length you've created here will be equal to one lot of the radius. So the radius is five centimeters, the arc length is five centimeters. And that's what's special, so there is some relationship to it. It's not just made up. So here, we've opened the sector to two radians. So the arc length should be two lots of the radiuses. And the radius is five, two lots of it will be 10. So the arc length is 10 centimeters. And that's because the angle is open to two radians. Now with this in mind, some of the formulas for sectors are now different. It's not as it was with degrees. So we can forget about all of them and learn some new ones. Now the first one which tells you the arc length, you might have already figured it out. It's simply r times theta. But theta will have to be in radians for you to use this formula. So r times theta gives you the arc length. And for area of a sector, we've got this formula here. Half r squared theta. Again, theta will have to be in radians. And we've got one more for the area of a segment. And now if you're not sure what a segment is, I've shown you one up here. And it's half r squared. And in brackets, we have theta minus sine theta. And if you're wondering where that formula came from, it's basically the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. Or you can just simply use the formula I've shown here. Now let's talk about converting from degrees to radians. You need to be really good at doing that because from now on, we're going to be working in radians. So what you need to know is 180 degrees converts to exactly pi radians. Now from that, we can work out what one degrees is. Divide both sides by 180, and you get one degrees is pi over 180 radians. And of course, knowing one degrees, you can now work out any amount of degrees in radians. You just need to times the formula for one degrees by whatever you want. If you want 2.3 degrees, just simply times both sides by 2.3, since you know one degrees. And of course, going back to that 180 equals pi radians, you can work out what one radian is by dividing both sides by pi. So one radian is 180 over pi degrees. And again, now you can convert any amount of radians into degrees. Just simply times both sides by 3.7 and you'll get 3.7 radians in degrees. So here I've got a whole load of degrees and their value in radians as well. Now these ones you should memorize. You can get them using the formula, but it's better if you simply memorize them. So you can say them very quickly and recognize them when you see them as well. And it's gonna help you a whole lot. So just pause this video and see if you can memorize these ones. Okay, so some of the key ones here is 360 degrees is two pi radians. 180 degrees is pi radians. And also it's good to know what 90 degrees, 60 degrees and 30 degrees is. The other two are not as popular, but just go ahead and memorize all of them. Okay, so let's have a look at a question. Now I'll give you a moment to read this question. So it's told us that the shaded area is 48. And using that information, we need to prove this expression for R. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Since we know that the shaded region is 48, 
let's go ahead and make an expression for that shaded region. We can simply work out the shaded region and equate it to 48. So we're going to use the area of a sector formula. That's what's going to be important here. And you should know that one by now, it's half R squared theta. So the shaded region is OBC, that's the sector OBC, minus the sector OAD. That should leave you with that shaded region. And we know the area of that is 48. So we've got the area of the big sector minus the area of the minor sector. Now the radius of the big sector is r plus 8. That's why we've got half r plus 8 squared times theta. Since the radius of the big sector is r plus 8. Minus the area of the smaller sector. And the radius of the smaller sector you can see is simply r. So it's just half r squared theta. And of course that's equal to 48. Okay, just to simplify things, times everything by 2 to get rid of those halves. Now on the left hand side we factorise out theta just to tidy up a little bit and what we can next do is open up the brackets inside and simplify it. And here you can see an r squared and a minus r squared so the r squareds cancel off. Next we'll divide both sides by theta and now we simply need to make r the subject. So, we, so we'll take the 64 to the other side and then finally divide both sides by 16. And we get what we needed to prove. R equals 6 over theta minus 4. Okay, so let's look at part B of the question. So take a moment to read the question. So we're told that R is equal to 10 theta. And we need to work at the perimeter of the larger sector. So we're definitely going to use what we worked out in the previous question. And of course it was a show that, so even if you didn't get it, you can still answer part B. And of course, the R can be replaced with 10 theta, because in the question it says, given that R is equal to 10 theta. Now looking at this new equation we've created, you know we can work out theta, because there's only one unknown. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just start off by timesing everything by theta. So multiply everything by theta, and then rearrange and you get yourself a quadratic, which you should be able to solve. Now I factorise here to get the values for theta. Of course, if you're good with your calculator, you will just throw the quadratic into your calculator and it'll give you the values right away. Now we know that theta can't be minus 1, so we'll discard that answer. Our theta value is going to be 3 over 5, or 0 0.6. Now using that theta value, of course, we can work out what r is. Since we know r equals 10 theta, that means r must be 6. 10 times 0 0.6 gives you 6. So we know the values for theta and r now. Let's go ahead and work out that perimeter. So the perimeter of the larger sector is going to be the arc length plus the radius and plus the radius again. So this time we've used the arc length formula and you should know that's r times theta. Of course, in this case, the r is actually r plus 8, as the radius is r plus 8. So it's r plus 8 times theta for the arc length. And we plus the radius twice, so it's plus r plus 8, plus r plus 8 again. Now, now we know that r is equal to 6, because we worked that out. So the radius can be replaced with 14. So let's go and replace every r plus 8 with 14. And we can also replace the theta with 0 0.6 or 3 over 5. Now it's just a matter of putting it into your calculator or you can simply do it in your head because it's not too difficult. And we get the perimeter to be 36.4. Now it's really important that you practice loads of questions like these because they're very tricky and they definitely come the exam. Another thing is you need to be good at using radians from now on. So avoid using degrees. Just get used to talking in terms of radians. Now, all those things you've been solving in your year one, when you've been solving your trigonometry, you'll be doing more or less the same, but you want your answers always in radians now. So you're going to change your calculator to radian function. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, 
drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.